This here is a Feller's 1981 GMC Sierra Grande. Not to be confused with Ariana, completely different. It's a half ton Ford W4 flavor. The guys always wanted to have a four wheel drive shop truck to complement the two wheel drive shop truck I'm currently building. And originally I bought this to tootle around in in the winter up north, but realized it's a tool that's also needed down south with how boggy and wet and muddy it always seems to be down here. And you guys know where I like to find my rigs way back in the tree rows or down in the bogs and whatnot. So we're definitely gonna need this truck around. I wanna finish this thing up and basically we're gonna go ahead and just overhaul this thing. I got bigger tires and wheels to put back on it, carpet, digital gauges. I might even put a tow hitch on it, stickers. I mean, we're gonna, let's snazz it up and make it a go in the town rig. Now, I realize a lot of you newer viewers have probably never seen this rig before, but I've actually had it for quite some time now. Back up north, it just sat behind the barn there, mainly out of view, and then down south here, it's just been tucked into the tree row. Here a couple weeks ago, we fired this thing up. It started right up after about a minute of cranking, and we've been using it to haul firewood and scrap and brush and debris and things like that. We're making some burn piles and clearing up the tree rows, you could see that soon on Vice Grip Lodge, our second channel. But mechanically speaking, this truck is solid. It's never let us down. It doesn't currently have any issues. It has a crate motor by Jags in here. It's got a Y-end intake. I can't remember, I think it's a Demon carburetor. It's got the boom tubes on it and all sorts of stuff. Bunch of new fancy parts that were on it when I bought the truck actually. And that guy was super nice and gave me a smoking deal on this. I got a book of receipts on this thing. It's just nuts. He actually pulled this out of a scrap yard and I believe that's what the fork marks in the side of the box are over here. Now, when I say go on the town rig, I'm not talking about full body and paint and things like that. I just wanna clean it up, make it comfortable, get the interior a little bit nicer and then get those big mud tires back on it and just make it a little bit more practical so we can actually call it a shop truck. Let's go ahead and jump into the interior, get all of that knocked out first because it's gonna be the most time consuming. I know what that is. Got it wrapped up in the barbed wire, been there. <laughs> Very basic interior. She's got the man wow cranks, nothing digital in the doors, which is great if you're gonna be out bogging and you know, you might have the window down and it's raining or whatever. We're gonna make this thing to be used but very basic interior here. It's not in terrible shape, to be honest. The wheel's already been swapped. This is a seat out of a newer year truck, and it's obviously the wrong color. I've went back and forth on covering this up. It is ripped up a little bit here, but here's the thing. I know it's gonna get dirty and muddy and you name it, so we're gonna save some money and just leave this seat alone. However, I am gonna put some carpet in here I think I might even put a radio so we can get the whale on screaming. Someone already cut this dash out. You don't wanna to torture this guy, go ahead and just strap me down with some log chains and let me watch you sawzall a dash out of a square body. <laughs> just stop doing that. Put it, in, put it in the glove box. Hang it under the dash. Lay it on the seat, but don't, don't cut the dash out of the dang rig for Pete's sake. One of my pet peeves is kind of these things down here, the shin breakers, you know what I mean? They're good in a jam and whatnot, and I've put them in, you've watched me put them in a bajillion times. But if it's a rig that I'm gonna be driving a lot, I wanna get rid of those things. And we're gonna do that by putting some digital gauges in here, because we just got the dummy lights over here. See, they're just lights and then, you know, speed and fuel. Those two do work, but I want to get this up here, essentially. So we're going to put digital gauges on up in there. And that should pretty well finish out our interior, along with the cheap little radio we got. She's already got boom booms sliced into the side again. Stop it. Stop doing that. You don't need to do that. You can put the Warren G's down here in the corners. 
they make brackets for those guys. I got good floor mats in here already, so we're saving some money there. And I think I even got some sill plates. I can't remember. I'll have to take a look and see. Anywho, since we got to tear all of this out, let's go ahead and just get the seat out first because then we're going to have more room wrestling around in here. And I think let's get this done, the dash, all this work. Then we'll do the carpet, and then we'll put the seat back in. Well, this is clearly a factory option. That's how you can get them to slide forward a little bit, you know? Wow. Well, that makes that easier. Not even the right size bolt. Okay, one down, three to go. Well, that was interesting. Two bolts holding this thing. In. Well, technically one and a half. The one on the captain side was doing nothing, so that's fine. I probably installed that and just forgot. Got a couple goodies here, fire extinguisher, and that's still up, it ain't down, so that's good. A little claw hammer, typical dirtiness. I picked up some new speaker wire, but I could have saved on that. She's already plumbed in, basically. Mouse trap over there, I threw that in. I remember doing that, but I guess we can clean this up a little bit so we're not just dragging it in and out 58,362 times. Got up this morning about 4.15, 4.30, couldn't sleep. Had something on my mind, and I don't know, maybe you fellers can help me figure this out. Is Kenny Chesney really country? I mean, he wears puka shell necklaces and tennis shoes, fellers. I don't know. I don't know. Guy just finished up with the Mouse Sucker 500. No Mises. And no ankle vents, finally. Probably the only rig I got without them, to be honest. I'm gonna grab these digital gauges quick. I'll show you what we're putting in. I gotta get into the box to get the constructions out. Butane, water pump, pulley, and night lights. Every guy needs that on the workbench. I went with New Vintage USA for the digital gauges. These are the ones that I have in the Independent Chevelle. Not only do they look and work great, but honestly, the installation on these is a breeze. All you have to do is plug in all your smaller gauges into the big gauge and you're done. And look at these things. They're gonna look really good in that truck. I'm just gonna pull out, here we go, installation. So I'm not sure if we have to modify the old housing bracketry or what in the world is going on. Normally I break stuff and struggle, then come back to these, but let's just go ahead and dive right wow they're like actual color step by step with circles and arrows and stuff picture book now this i can follow step one cold snack step two we got to just go ahead and snip this bezel out of here and snag out these old gauges you guys have done that a bajillion times it's 58,000 screws around here and then that whole housing will come out there's a plug and a speedo cable and then it looks like we got some different bracketry on the old shift matic screen here. Mine's actually busted. So maybe the spring just fell off the clip. We'll try to fix that if we can, that'd be neat. So uh, got that out, I guess. This down here is just a mess. I'm digging into these old gauges here. and I started following a bunch of this stuff. And then I remembered that the electrical system on this truck is just absolutely cobbled together. In fact, it's so bad the guy I bought it from picked up a harness and threw it in with the truck. Look at all this stuff. It doesn't even make sense. Look at that. So I got to put that on the list. I don't think I'm going to get to it ATM, you know, at the moment, but we got to address it sooner than later because probably a fire hazard just waiting to happen, you know. But anywho, now that this is tore down, I'm going to go ahead and get to putting the sending units in here, but it's not that bad. I just got to take this mechanical guy out, pop in a beep, boop, boop, pop one that we're going to run a wire in. And then it's got the old copper, which is better than the plastic tubing for the oil pressure back there. We're going to screw in a electro digital one that's going to have some wires coming off of that. And that's pretty much it. Voltages, fuel, everything else we pull from inside the cab and that kit comes with all this stuff here the only gotcha we have is sometimes these don't 
clear those intakes and you got to get a pipe fitting to kick this off at an angle you guys have seen me do that a couple times and this is a man well we're following here and there's just this harness once you connect your sensors this plugs into the main speedometer temp fuel one or your tack and then the other gauges just plug right into those and you're done so these just plug into that nice and easy and then this is really the only thing you're wiring oil pressure sensor you know that's plugged in then what i did is i went ahead and twirled on the key fired it up and then you know laid my belly in here revved the snot out of her and then just felt around down in there and made sure it wasn't leaking i think it went far enough in without the angleizer 300 to you know fit and not leak so so far so good now here if i get enough ranch dressing on here i can leave this bottom one in because it's seated see it's seated in there just take this top side out put the new one in and we're good to go guys gotta move quick on this one because we're gonna get juice coming out here see, there's the ice cube juice fast fast oh no wrong size fitting no no put this one back in okay we'll just pretend that didn't happen and also that the coolant here is not cool it's about 200 degrees so that feels really good on the hand okay maybe the right size fitting now guy was trying to be lazy and it just bit me so i'm gonna do the right thing and keep that approach up in the future now what have we got what is this telling us mm -hmm. still very hot so that's good oh goodness okay plug plug -alize it get in there and plug it up well what in the devil is going on with this I just cleaned the floor. Didn't knew I was doing a radiator flush today as well. Get some more torque on this. When you run brass into aluminum, you just you really want to over torque it, you know. Sure. Maybe that'll work. So what a guy's gonna do now is start wiring from the front of the rig and bring them in, you know, which really isn't. All I'm doing is the oil pressure and the temp sensor. Everything's going to be in the dash, but I'm going to run those two lines, get them plugged in under the hood. Then I got a piece of masking tape here, and in about 35 minutes when I find a marker, I'll come back, and I'm just going to mark one of these, I don't know, we'll say tack, because, again, one of these plugs into the tack, one of these plugs into the speedo, and they have different sensors that go into each. That way I know which one's which, because these are identical in color. And then... We'll get these hooked up, rigged up and ready. Then we'll come in and set the, I'm sure there's a plastic thing in here somewhere that these, you know, they do, I don't know, they do the thing. That's how they, that's how they go in there. Okay, marker search, commence. So all the digital wiring is done out here. What did I do here now? Okay, so I did blue, you know, water right there. That's plugged right up in. Yeller over there for the oil pressure because that matches the harness and the truck there. And then violet off of the distributor for attack signal, normally green, but again, violet matches the harness in the truck. So that just makes it easier in there. So this is all done under here technically. So I could throw the air purifier on and just button this up. It's time to snip snag the ticket getter bolts out. Oh yeah, nice and crispy. Oh, usually they fight more than that. Help! Yeah. Now, if a guy were to do this correctly, this is where you'd wash it down real good with some wax and grease remover, put something in like some boom mat or spray and sound deadening, get your belts all the way out, throw them in the kitchen sink with some Dawn dish soap, hot water, agitate them, clean them up. So I'm going to do the right thing and do none of that at all. We're just going to hang these out the back, get them out of the way, collect on the bolts here, run the mouse sucker 500 in one more time, and then just, you know, snip that carpet in. I think that's a good enough improvement. Guy's really getting after her in here, and I know it looks like a lot is going on, but really it's not. 
all we've run is these three wires. That's it. Ground was already here, running down to the old gauges. This positive was already ran. This other positive was already ran. They had two going to the same gauge cluster. I don't know why, and it comes from the same source. But that's fine, because we'll use this one for the radio. Get that whale on going a little bit later. All this other stuff is just, you know, they have a ton of options. Auxiliary and check engine lights and warnings and 12 volt warnings and all that stuff. Because they make them for a bunch of different flavors. And we're not going to be using a majority of this. Last thing we got to do here is the turn signals. And light blue, dark blue is always your front in GM. Light blue is left, dark blue is right, and then the green and yellow is going to be the rears. So we're going to tie this in here. Looks like blue and gray. We'll get those going. Black is always horn on GM. I mean, they're really good at keeping all their wiring the same for many years at a time. So like square bodies, it's all the same. Getting really close to having this buttoned up, then we can come back and dress all this up really nice, get it set in here, and then start putting all the they got to have some sort of backing plate system. Also, I think I forgot to order this uh, two-wire speed sensor thing. That's what this is here. I just coiled it up um, orange to orange. And I'll put this under the dash for now when I get that part in. Basically, just unplug the speedo cable, screw that in. One side goes to ground, one side plugs into this, and boom, digital speedo. That easy. Guys doing some testing here before I button everything up. Checking out the blankers and all that stuff. I was not getting blankage on the right here, and I, I know that I had the colors right. This is actually the bulb that was in the right side, and you can see it looks good. Both filaments are there and whatnot. So what I did was just pop both off, flip the bulbs, because the left side was working and now it's not. So I know for sure that this bulb is bad. Hits! Always miss. Pop a new one in, and then we're good to go. By the way, if you don't know what color your turn signals are, just pop these off. See? Green. Pop that one off. You get yellow, so forth. But we're about there. We about got everything buttoned up. We can get all those wires tucked into the dash. Try to clean them up a little bit. Now we're cooking with canola oil. That one's looking good. Even got the tail lip lights working again. Replaced the backup light. Should have everything sorted out. We just had some burnt out bulbs back here, fellas. That whining in here is the digital pump on this. Got them all fingerprinted up. I'll clean them up once I get them in the truck, but this is what they look like assembled here. And this part is pretty neat. Like I was talking earlier. Easy. All you have to do is just plug, they call them minor gauges, I think, into the majors. So you just come over here and boop, just follow the constructions here on what goes where. Plug them in the back and then those two harnesses we wired in, those just plug in there and all of these are going to light up just fine. Now, the smaller gauges are loose right now. We're going to go get this in the truck and then we've got to put the bezel in and then kind of adjust these a little bit. And they also come with spacers so you can bring them out, bring them in, bring them out in or Waller them around. They're kind of egg shaped. You can move them, you can adjust them. You can move them around where you want them, is what I'm saying over here. So I'm going to get that done real fast and then we'll see if we can get the bezel on. Well, that was super simple for a guy. Actually, it went really fast. Just a screw here, screw there, and over there. And there's a little spacer disc rooney goes behind there. By the who and way, and you know, you can put whatever gauges you want into whatever slots. Right? I mean, you can customize it. So I did oil, water, because I like those. These are the ones that, you know, I hook my peepers on and then bat and feel. And you can even switch those around, of course. It doesn't really matter. Now that bezel is going to slide over these. And then it should just kind of flush in. I guessed on the spacers. We might have to pop this out and play with the spacers, but we'll see what happens. But see, these also move around so we can get it to line up with that original bezel as close as we can. Oh my goodness. This looks really, really good. And the lights are blue, I'm told, but we're gonna wait for that until we get it all in. Anyway, what I did here is just put this corner screw in and these are kind of loose, so I could just get my fingers in here and move them around where I want these gauges to sit. 
See, and once I get them perfectly fit in here, then I'll snug everything up back there. But man, these are looking really nice. So I got all these laminated now to where they shoot through the, you know, whatever that is, bezel. So I'm just gonna pop these three screws out, tilt it forward, tighten everything up, and then we can go ahead and get the dash pad back on, snap that in for the last time when we're good to go. I am gonna program it really quick. That's what these guys are. Uh, before we uh, put the bottom piece on here, and I'm just gonna let these hang. I did drill some holes in that because, well, it was already hacked up, so I wasn't worried about it. But the more I thought about it, you should only have to program it once unless I wanna do like trip or whatever. But I, I don't do a lot of that. So I'll just hide it in here. And if I ever wanna get access to it, all I have to do is pull four screws out and then I got them right there. Or I could even just, you know, let them hang out like that. We'll see. I'm gonna be putting one of those El Cheapo 6000, I don't know, it's like a carpet mat or something on this. It's been a while since I've done it, but I think they come with like Velcro sticky pads. So I'm using this, I don't know, wax and grease remover. I'm gonna wipe all this down, get it nice and clean before I put it back in the truck. And then that way I don't gotta fight with the windscreen and whatnot. It'd be easier this way. Well, there they are, they look great. Let's twist the key here. No way, look at that, vice grip garage. These guys rock. That's really cool. That is because of my blinker stick. I got a, yeah, see, I got something going on with my blinker stick. But right blinker, left blinker, by the way, you can use these as well. They have lights down here. I just decided not to because of that. And then, got a high beam. Blue lights, that is sweet. Let's fire it up. That's so cool. Okay, tax working fine. It was down because we were testing all the lights. Fuel gauge is working fine. Oil pressure, whoa. Let's see if we can get that up a little bit, huh? Well, that's all she wants to do, I guess. Might have to look at that. That's cool. Looks great. Oh, I wonder if my dimmer, if I got that. Yep. She's just a little, that's awesome. And we cleaned this up down here. No more banging my shin off of that. We cleaned up a ton of wiring underneath the dash. You name it. Something else that's really cool about these I found on the Cheval. You could do zero to 60 time, eighth mile and quarter mile right out of the gauge here. And they have a ton of different options in these as well when you're scrolling through them and stuff like that. I'm gonna find my dash pad, get that put on quick. So this is just basically done. And then we can move into the car pay. That's all finished up. It'll relax after a little while. Cheap way to get them looking a little bit better. They do make plastic caps that you can just lay over them for like 119 bucks or something like that. If yours is real bad, that might be the way to go. Otherwise, the repop dashes are really expensive and they're kind of getting hard to find actually. But let's go ahead and move on to the carpet. I gotta re-clean the cleanage that I cleaned in here. Ooh, we got some sunlight misters, okay. And then we'll probably have to take all that plastic rigmarole off and figure out the hole for that, of course, dropping it in here. Now the color of carpet I got is not, it's, it's not, it's bad. It's not right. I tried to get like a medium blue, but apparently my eyes are bad or I don't know how to use the internet or the color is wrong on my computer box screen. Nope, definitely all three of those combined. I ended up with like a neon laser like LED, what in the world, bowling alley blue color. It is terrible, but I'm not gonna pay to ship this box back because it's so heavy and then get another color and blah, 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 because it was clearly my fault. So there's that. Let me, I'll show you. It's, whew, 
it's there. So this is the color I was going for right here, which is, it's a medium blue. It's actually darker than what you guys are seeing. But this is for the Ford pickup. And what I ended up getting, let me find it wherever it is. I don't even know if you're ready for this. What in the devil am I looking at? This is so bright and it's the wrong kind. It's not the cut pile loop stuff. I don't know what color they call this. Electric blue. Four wheel drive, 2004 electric blue. I don't know. Whatever this is in, stop it, is what I'm saying. Goodness gracious. But again, we're gonna go with it because it's what we got. I'm gonna get this laid out here outside in the sun so it starts, you know, not doing this anymore. And now we gotta come back and we gotta land some speaker cable wires in there and get them going. And maybe we just go ahead and start putting that in while this is deformalizing. One of my favorite hats right here. Got the 3D fishes on it. Put that up on the dash. Okay. Now apparently, this has already got the boom booms wired up here with some Walmart connectors. So that saves on some money. We'll just string them up through there. That side looks to be, or is that, no, it's connected. Do the same over here. Then I can return that wire I got. And then vacuum one more time. I think this has to come out actually because that carpet should have a lip in here and uh this is where a lot of rattles come from guys don't realize that and it squeaks see so you're going down the road these get crispy when they're new they have some flex to them but and then they make a carpet panel you could put back here too fellers not only does it insulate it and stuff like that but it'll help with the shaking and the jiggling but we're not doing that on this rig we might do that on the croup cab so guys, Tekka Nichols on this, I don't know, there's 32 ways of skin an alligator or whatever. I roll her up like a taco slider in this way, 42 degrees, unroll 2%, roll another 32 degrees, roll it under oh, about halfway of what's existing. Then once you get the front tucked, flap it down. And then it just lays all the way percentages. And then I just work it around the hump. So I'm just coming in here with my hands, get this all worked in over the hump. Get that settled down and then we're going to come back and worry about the shifter later i just want to make sure that we have it in the right position here because if i'm good here i know that my toe kick pad area is going to be right in the end so i'm going to go over and do the same over there reach back under shift this all the way to what would that be four low so it's more vertices than angles. then we'll make a little slit just enough to get that rod through and then we can readjust everything. We might even put some clamps, something on the edges here. Then we'll come back and make the final provisions. Boy, these blues just clash. Looks terrible. Original blue color, rattle can door panel, second paint job, electric blue. I don't know. Sure wish it would be this color, but it is what it is and it's better than raw metal I guess. Here's that slice there I was talking about and I was a little bit off and you can see that I'm working it over but we've got that big box to go around here we're okay with that. I just try to keep as much material there for insulation and whatnot so I'm going to make a slice this way about two inches and then you can see we're against the footwell over there. Got to bring this over just a little bit but I got quite a bit to work out yet. It's kind of a little bit too bigger to be honest. I'm gonna start cutting and trimming it in over here. I wanna get the sill plate in first, then we'll come back and do the dimmer switch. Make sure this is pulled over as best we can. If you find yourself fighting, which I think this is a crew cab piece, actually, but if you have any bumps that you're really fighting, go get your uh, heat gun out, also known as your wife's hair dryer, and just, you know, do that. Heat it up a little bit. And that's going to make this much more malleable. This is just basically a rubber compound back here. And I'm going to do quite a bit of trimming, but I'm going to get the sill plate in place first. Work my way across. I'm going to be fine over there. That sill plate. And then we'll trim this. Get the foot switch in. And then finish that out. Just got to cut the brackets out. That's where I can get the screws back in there. 
Got the sill plate cleaned up, just scrub her down in the hand sink over there. Used some bigger, I don't know, nut head bolts. And then got the grommet in over there. So now we'll flip over to the other side, stretch it, re-smooth it. And then the lastly, like I say, we'll cut the back here. Got this all cut in. Again, I like to leave as much carpet. Some people just get cut happy. And when I cut around the shifter, I only take the top part out. I leave all the insulation in there. And that really cuts down again on, I don't know, stuff. Especially your gravel road feather, you need that. Also threw in a new lip bulb down there so a guy can see when he's digging into four L's, you know. Just gotta throw this on quick, toss the knob on, then we're moving on to the seat. And we gotta start by getting all of our bracketry holes. You probably noticed my pick that I threw down in here when we were getting set up. And that was to help me hold this into position and also mark where that uh, bolt hole is. I'm gonna take just a punch and a pair of vice grips here, and I'm gonna heat up the end, and basically I'm gonna pull this out and push this right into that spot and work it around a little bit, and it's gonna perfectly melt a hole to match that bolt hole. I'll put the bolt in here, then we'll move to the front seat bolt, which I just use a pick to find it, or you can go underneath the truck and poke it out the back. These will be super easy to find. Work my way around until we have all of those provisions in there and then we just get the seat back in and snip the bolts in. I've shown you guys this a few times, but I'm gonna do it again. This has a refresh course. I got my pick in the floor over here. I'm just gonna heat this puppy up quick. I don't know, you want like 119 or million degrees? No, not really. It doesn't have to be super hot. Also make sure to have a lot of spit and wind in your mouth in case things start, you know, lighting on fire. But I've never had that happen yet, anyway. That's pretty good. I'm just gonna pull this out, drop this right in its place. Work it into your bolt hole. Boom, done. Perfect hole, bolt's gonna drop right in that thing. So this is the one I've already done. Here's the other one over there. You can see how neat and clean that is. It burns the edges so nothing frays, tears, or rips. And that bolt is gonna drop right in the place. We're not gonna have to fight and wrestle on it. So I got a few more of those to do and then I'm gonna probably go grab one of the kids, help me heave the seat in here. Don't wanna be tearing up on the new carpet now. This here is a front end bolt kit for a square body. I'm uh, permanently borrowing some out of this package uh, from the crew cab square body here. By the way, things are getting really serious over here and hope to have this together and running for power tour. There should be absolutely everything here needed to make that happen. Sorry guys, it took so long. It's just, I mean, look, the stuff is not cheap, you know, and there's pages and pages of this. So I know you guys understand that, you get that. You squeeze a couple parts in here and there each check and you just keep working your way through it, right? That's all we do. So I'm gonna pop these in, these are for the seats. Well, Feller's got this 100% ready to get the seat in, but before I do that, I'm gonna finish out the Raggio because if you're a bigger Sasquatch like me, you know that is not fun trying to bend and articulate one's body. You got your feet out the beer window and all that stuff, trying to get that in. So I'm gonna do that now before we get the seat in, because the guy can just, you know, lay down in here. And I got, you know, most of the wiring, it's just, it's already hanging in here. I thought I had a ground even here. I don't know what that goes to, but we'll use it. $30 of Wally World, and this is it. This is a whole rig right here. I remember when these were like two feet long, and they had the detachable face, or they had a big pull-out handle and all that stuff, but now it's like a three ounce little just piece of banana bread. That's it. You guys got this plugged. Oh, of course it's blue light. Mute, how do you unmute? Oh, there we go. So that's working. Took me a minute to wire it in. I'm getting colorblind in here with all this blue. This is like if you hold your retina right to a beer sign at the tavern, you know what I mean? It's just, it's there and it just plays with all the other colors. I guess that's it. We just got to jam this in the dash now. Got Brary in the truck. He's going to help me put the seat in here. 
basically fold her like a taco, get her up on the hips, guide it in, get it over the belt. You're, you gotta get it over the belt. There you go, bud. Oh, now we just gotta feed the belts through. Well, the interior is coming around. Got the seat all bolted in. It's looking pretty sharp, but we're gonna tie her all in by adding on the carpet on the bottom of the doors. And yep, this is that same electric blue. At least it's not another different blue. My goodness. You even got the chrome strips. You know, we're really gonna doll it up with these. These have these tabs here that puncture through this cardboard. And then once you get them in, you just bend these tabs over. And that's what holds that on. This kit also came with screws, but I think I dropped them or something. Oh, they're right here. That little bag there. I got this, uh, where did I buy this? LMC, I think. But let me get these assembled and we'll get these on the door quick. So this is what it looks like. Not bent and then of course bent. I just use a rubber mallet and just tippy tap, snip them over. And these came pre-punched, which is nice. If they're not pre-punched, they're 7 16 of an inch from the edge is where you want to drill these holes. Just take one of these, line it up on here, and you can make your marks with like a permanent marker and then just drill them really quick. But this one I didn't have to, it's pretty nice. And don't go nuts with the screws on these here, fellers. The kits come with 10 screws per side, but I usually do it with six. I'll show you where you put those. First of all, line this up. Make sure you got a nice even gap all the way around the door. So she's gonna wanna close on you. You know what I mean? Now I'm gonna take my first screw and put it on the bottom so it holds it up. I'm gonna get this in, then I'll explain what I'm doing here. Not pre-drilling these or anything like that. Just wasting on time. So what I do is just one in each corner, here and here, and one in the bottom corners. And then I just follow these screws straight down. So each side is the same, you know, but that's all a guy needs and it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Ruffle up the carpet a little bit. You can kind of hide these screws. There we go. Door panel's done. One other thing a guy's gonna do real quick, I actually forgot when I had this bezel out, is touch up the rings in it. And if you're a you know, GM Chevy guy, you know what I'm talking about on the bezels. They usually have like a silver ring, kinda makes a nice definition in there in the cluster. Well, they get sun faded or they get wiped out when you're wiping the gauges out. Now, when you got them out, you could take a couple hours and use some acrylic craft paint like this silver metallic and a soft brush and paint them up and they're gonna look really nice. You can do the right thing and just grab a silver permanent marker and draw them up. That's what I've always done. Five minutes, brand new. I'll show you. Yep. Mm -hmm. So these two here have not been touched. These have a marker. Same over here. This one has not been touched. I just ran the marker around that one. It takes literally two minutes and it just makes this stuff pop. We can go around all that and even the four wheel drive ring down there and it's gonna put some life back into it, you know? Well, it is went ahead and be the next day. Now, late last night, I finished up the wiring on that auto digital speedo sensor thing. And then this morning, drinking my coffee, walking around, watching the construction process here, I tripped over this dry tight hitch. I'm not sure where, I think this is the one I got at a garage sale for like 35 bucks. Anywho, let's see if we can maybe fit it on the truck. Might not be a bad idea to have some sort of receiver hitch on this thing. By the way, it dropped like 30 degrees overnight. It is cold. Why do people say 
it's chilly when it's cold. Chili should be hot and spicy, you know what I mean? So it's ice cream out today is what it is. And a little ice cream in the shop, going to be honest. Anywho, I threw the old tape stick on this, and it's pretty close width-wise. It must be a universal jobber. But we'll see if uh, we can get the bent up tabs off and maybe get this thing fitted on there. I don't, I don't know yet, is what I'm saying. Keep walking by this bumper and it's just, it's starting to wear on me a little bit. So I'm gonna completely rebuild that. And by that, I mean, you know, this is 1650 cast aluminum. Of course, we're going with engine paint because we don't prep anything or nothing like that. And this should look pretty good. Oh, brand new by the time we're done here. Yeah. Yep, brand new diamond tread bumper. Lost the receipt though. Shoot. <laughs> I forgot about this. We got, uh, I don't know what comes up, swoops around, comes up, does a twirly there, and then this side kind of just, you know, goes around the shock, around the lift block. Whoop, snips back and then snags in. Oof, da may. Guy's gonna have to probably, no, I'll probably just leave it until I start leaking. But uh, I was looking on here, there used to be a, some sort of a, you know, tow bar hitch, receiver hitch thing. Guy might want to put one of them back on, maybe. Hmm. Got the 208 T case in our teeth here. This is the very final step that I have to do for the gauges there, is just plug in the Electrodigital speedometer readout, do dippy phase electromagnetic sensor here. And I just unscrewed the old speedo cable, tucked that on there. This screws right in. Super simple. Ground, 12 volt switched. And this is that orange sending wire that I already pre ran and kind of hung behind the dash. So I just got to get that wired up. I'm going to clean some of this other. I don't know. Don't look at it. Basically, I'm going to clean some of that up. This is laying on the exhaust pipe. That seems fine. Oof. I don't think I've been under the truck like this before, have I? I don't know. She's got gyps, though. I'm going to have to get some tips on it, though, if she got gyps. It's a rule. Did some more measure sticking in here, and I think we don't want to use this, because this is on the bumper attachment thingy, and there used to be some homemade jobber on here that apparently snapped off. But I gotta bend this down a little bit. But from here to here, we're closish to the thing that's over there that does the stuff. And then from the final bolt in the rear to the front of the receiver hitch, it's gonna put it right about here, which sure, you know, that might work. I'm gonna see if I can get the earth twister and knock these bolts out the traditional way. And then if that doesn't work, I'll get the gas axe out and just, you know, get them out of there. Well, if a guy has any chance of easing these out, we're just, we're going to have to take it easy here, fellers, and just take these out nice and slow. Nice and, nice and slow. Yeah. Slower. What happened? Snapped her? Ah, oh, figures. Ooh, that's hotter than two tamales, and I ain't kidding you. Well, what in the devil? One down, 46 to go. Great. Come off a lot easier when they're juiced, you know? Well, three of the four bolts in here lined up, which is awesome. This might be the one off the square body, that would explain why it just went right in. This one's not lining up, however. So what a guy's gonna do is torqueize these to 1,400 foot-pounds and just this front one. Then I'm gonna take the Tanya 200 down here and just ease it. Ease the bracket out. And we bring it out just an eighth of an inch and I think that'll line up and then boom, done. You guys got a vice grip on this side just kind of hovering it over my face you know and then uh trying to start this to oh look at that this might be super simple 
get these two bolts in and we can analyze on the situation here. Is everything lining up? No. Can't. Huh. Just ease. Hot stab! Hot stab! Ah! Oh. Did we get the desired results? No. Okay. Well, maybe if we unease this one and then ease it back a little? I don't know. I'm just making stuff up at this point. Well, for Pete's sake, I just put you in. Okay. Is anything easing? Plan L, Roto Rooter. Just waller it out a little bit. Just slide right in. Ah, oh. oh. see, just needed a waller on her. That's all. New lock washer, but we're reusing the same old rounded off hardware. You know, gotta save where you can save. Okay, yep. Boom. Receiver hitch, hitched. Do we need lights? No. That seems like we're going a little far, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, she's starting to rain on top of the ice cream outside. Let's go jump on the old John Deere, take a 75 hour ride down to Rusty Acres, pick up the tires and wheels for this. If you remember a long, long time ago, I had some mag wheels, and I can't remember if they're 33s or 35s. Doesn't matter. Hurts the kidneys. Eh. Ride quality, schmality. Get them before it starts downpouring, bring them back. Might as well throw them on now while these tires are just right in the old throw the back out mode. We're getting close. It's looking good. Real good. Found them. Cooper AT3XLT. What are these? 33125 15s. Hope I got the right lug. Look, they're brand new. It's got the blue on them, so gotta find the right lug, so that's gonna be the more bigger issue. It's just, it's just get these loaded up, threw the forks on. I think I could just, you know, stackalize them. There we go. Get these unloaded, rolled inside, and then I gotta start rooting around for some lug nuts. They take a shank style with a washer on these. You have to use the right ones or it wallers them wheels out quick. Guy always throws his lug nuts in bags from projects. And uh, I've got a few options here. These look like 716s. Yeah, so this should work here, and they're centered. Some of these, like Krager, Style. Oh, here's a good example right there. See how they're wallered out? That's for like the multi-bolt pattern wheels, but that's not what we need. Jeez, my compressor's louder than Roseanne. Might be time for a filter change or something. Hits! Come on now! Get out of there. Here we go! Come off now! Well, these Geolanders did pretty decent. I'm gonna go throw these back in the rusty acres. Might need them later. Nope, probably not. This needs rebuilt, doesn't it? I can tell I rebuilt it once already. Get out of there, spiders. Yes. Let me go find my brake drum rebuild kit really fast. Here it is. You know, while a guy is in here, can he rebuild the frame too? Oh, I can. Brand new. Oh yeah. Maybe the leaf springs? Boom. Got some Skyjacker leaf springs in here now. Forgot the receipts though at my mom's house, so. But them's new, you know, you can look at them. Oh yeah, there we go. Perfect. What was I doing? Oh, this thing, yeah. Had some orange showing through. I think that's what they were originally. First time I swapped the wheels and mm -mm. I don't need Chevy orange brake drums, I guess. 
There we go. Good enough for the girls we date. Let this dry for about 30 seconds. And by dry, I mean just enough to leave a fingerprint. And then we'll go get a tire and throw it on here. The lack of rust in this rig is alarming. Not quite sure what to do with my hands at this point. Okay, now I'm done. No, wait. I always find it funny that tires on a truck or car look a certain size and when you pull them off, you go, goodness gracious, that's a lot bigger than I thought. That's kind of how this goes here too. Oofta. These must weigh 150 pounds or more. Let's see. Something like that, I guess. And then we need a washer. I like to start one on the bottom because then it holds it and you can kind of hover the wheel around, get the rest of them in easier. Mm -hmm. Sure. I thought about running these center caps over here, but I decided not to. This looks okay, and I don't have the chrome ones that kind of wrap around the front anyway. I got one, I couldn't find the other. So we're just gonna have to go this way. I kind of like how it makes the wheel look deeper anyway than it really is. Fills the fender perfect though. 35's too much. While the hubbulators are drying there, I'm gonna try to address this dent here. It's just been bugging me. Got this cheap polar off Amazon. Nope. Nope. Wow. Wow. This is about worthless. I gotta clean it up some more or something. Well, it kinda came out of there. Got the top part anyway. I can't get it to pull that bottom one out. It's just creased a little too hard, I guess. Well, that's all right. Cause you know, there's, well, there's some hail damage here and there. It's kind of there's a ding there or something. So kind of blends in. Them bad boys are on, looking much better. One last thing to do. We gotta get Vice Grip Garage up on here somewhere, even though everybody already knows me by this rig, but those that don't, can't tell, right? So I got some stickers. Let's put a sticker on the door over here and uh, see what that looks like. Kind of an old school pinstripe design. In fact, I'll show you what it looks like. It's this logo right here. And enough of you fellers notice this on the side of the fridge actually that we put them up on the website at vicegripgarage.com. They're smaller, you know, they're like yay size, but I'm gonna get two of these and throw them up on the door. And I kind of looked at they look, you know, aged or older, kind of old school shop kind of look with the pinstripe and whatnot. Nothing flashy as far as color goes. And hopefully that looks decent overall. Gonna Windex the doors down really quick and just uh, throw them on. Not a sticker guy. We'll see what happens. Well, let's see what we can do here. Ran a piece of tape down the center. Well, the right side of my tape line is on the center because what I'm gonna do is pull it back, cut it, do one side, then do the other-ish. And right now I just need to kind of eyeball this about where I had the other one. I'm gonna say there, what did I say? Three and a half from the body line. That is three and five eighths, gotta scooch it up. It's gotta go to the right a little bit. I'm gonna go double check my measurements. Yeah, so biggest move is going to the right a little bit here. Let's go with that. Once I get these two measurements right, then I'll worry about trying to get her level on the door. Just a horse hair over. Now, this should be like a plum bob should hang pretty darn level, but I'm gonna use the bottom of this garage logo here and the bottom of the door, and I can kinda of see what we got cooking here. A couple pieces of tape on the side, 
take a step back, get a wobble pop in the belly, maybe throw some chips down the app, stare at it. It's the best thing you can do on project regs is just, you know, if you got a recliner, sit in it, stare it down, you know? That's what I'm gonna do, let it just sit, cook. Then we'll come back, hmm. plan. Dill pickle chips, that's what I had. Anyway, I stared at it long enough. I guess I'm good with it if you are. Okay, well, then let's just let's finish this up. We'll leave this here, make sure it's not moving. We're just gonna bring this back over here. First thing I gotta do, this is double folded. So we're gonna cut the top paper. So we can get her off there. Bring this around now. Guy's pocket knife should be able to do this, but apparently I've been cutting volcanoes with mine and it uh, does not want to cut paper anymore. And then I'm just gonna bring this right down through here. Gently, you don't want to scratch the paint on this rig. Get your wife's MasterCard, which you should already have in your pocket. I don't. And uh, just, you know, work it on. Get it, just press it on here. Work it over, go slow, you know, don't, you don't want air bubbles or whatnot. There we go. This is this from the same sticker guy that makes our stickers that you can get on the website there. So they're really, really high quality stickers. They're thick. Makes it a little bit easier to put them on, to be honest. There we go. He actually works out of his basement, I think. I'd rather support that feller than some big, huge corporation, you know what I mean? Nice guy. Okay, and then you just, you know, it's the, you got, it's the same process on the, you gotta do it again over here. Wow, crying in the mud. There we go. Bring it on, get it over here. So, you know, we got all these dents and doodabs on this side. It's gonna get a little interesting here. Maybe this will hide some dents. That'd be nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Sure. I think that's done. All right, here we go. Right where that A is in garage is that big dent. Hey, that don't look that bad. Brings the shine down in that dent, see? Nice. I think that might be straight. I'll <laughs> be dipped. <laughs> Guys got this side on. I think I like that. It's just big enough to be noticeable, but it's not super gaudy or anything like that. It's not centered completely in the door. I wanted to back more towards the lock because we've got all this room up here. And then I brought it down a little bit lower than usual because the truck is lifted, you know. So instead of running that pinstripe right to that body line, it's about three and a half from that body line and six and a quarter from the door line. Well, fellers, I think I'm gonna call this truck done for now anyway. Guy got everything accomplished that I wanted to. Got this interior really cleaned up and it's looking pretty snazzy. It's gonna be a lot more comfortable and quiet for longer trips. Got that radio in there too for those long trips. Gotta have some Waylon or Hank or something like that going on in those nice digital gauges. Guy's gone right in the peepers now and got all that junk hanging off the bottom of the dash. Got the big Coopers back on this thing so we can get this thing where we need it to go. You know, it's a nice enough go in the town rig. You can 
run the old lady and the Applebee's, scoot into the tavern. But a guy can sneak this thing into the trees and get some work done if a guy needs to and not worry about scratching the paint. To me, that's a real pickup truck. Speaking of getting work done, I got a full load in the back here ready for the dump. I was going to jump in, sneak down, and get that done. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it very much. We'll see you next time. It's up a little bit higher on this here ramp thing, huh? Thank you.